for August. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The clerk call roll, please. Brown? Yes. Evans? Here. Booty? Excused. Groton? Here. Burroughs? Excused. Schuster? Here. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to move the, to alter the agenda to move um, our presentation from Baker Tilly to the top of the order. Motion by Evans? Second. Second by Grant. Any further discussion? And none. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The agenda has been amended. Amanda, Baker Tilly, you're up. All right, do you want me to in a specific place over here? Camera can catch you that way. here talks about the general fund and fund balance so um, just a little bit of background uh, the city's general fund is the main operating fund it's where the bulk of the tax dollars go uh, to support administration public safety public works recreation parks and, and those kinds of costs um, given that we take a look at the equity in that fund um, or the fund balance as it's called uh, to see, you know, how much is on reserve there, is that a good amount or not. And so uh, this chart that you see at the top uh, shows fund balance by certain categories. The top two lines, so you'll see the black line is the 2020 amount compared to the green line is 21 of each category. The top line is your total. So you'll see that the total fund balance actually increased by about $226,000 in 21. Um, we'll get into the details of that in a little bit here. Um, there are different categories of fund balance or the equity based on the uh, liquidity, essentially, or, or how soon you can access those funds. Uh, if we start at the bottom and jump down there, you'll see the non-spendable category. Um, and that is really un. It is like it says, you can't spend it on current bills. It's wrapped up in either long-term type assets or uh, we may have already spent it on a, a prepaid item or something like that. So uh, what you'll see here is you'll notice that this amount went up quite a bit in 21 compared to 20. Um, and the majority of this balance is related to um, uh, an advance that the, that the general fund is making to TIF 4, uh, which is really typical for newer TIFs where the general fund might be the finance, um, might be providing the financing for some of those startup costs with the TIFs. The other uh, piece of this, which really accounts for the increase in that um, non-spendable category, uh, is owed by the CDBG 
CDL or the Close Fund, I believe is what you're calling it, and that is funding the Highland and Oak project. Um, so that uh, project got off, it got started with some engineering costs in 21 um, with anticipation of continuing into 22. So some of those costs were just uh, funded up front um, by the general fund. And so the expectation is that those will should get repaid by some other source, whether it's a grant or um, um, assessments or whatever. So um, you'll see the other two categories, um, assigned and unassigned, were really similar to what they were last year. Um, those are more liquid in nature, um, basically available to use on your current budgeted costs and um, um, able to essentially pay your bills. So um, those amounts really remain relatively stable. Any questions so far? Um, in the middle of the page, you'll see a very summarized income statement, essentially summarizing the revenues and expenditures. Um, actual compared to your budget. Um, you had a balanced budget, anticipated expenditures would equal revenues, which is great. Um, actual um, increase, you know, we had an increase in revenues, so an increase overall in fund balance of about 226000 If you go to the next page, um, this continues an analysis of the general fund balance. Um, and compares the, that those assigned and unassigned categories to the annual operating expenditures. So we make a ratio here, we compare the two um, and come up with a percentage. And what this really means is that how, how much of our annual budget can we fund with our reserves that are on hand, that are with our spendable reserves. And so this chart actually trends this percentage or this ratio out over the last five years. And you'll see that um, back in 2017 and 18, we were up in the 40% um, um, ratio. And then that's dropped in the last couple of years to around 27%. The city's goal is to have this percentage in between 15 and 20%, which is you know, on the lower side for a smaller community. So I don't, I mean, you can still try to, you know, kind of um, lower it down into that range <coughs> if you desire, but um, you know, where it's sitting now is not unreasonable um, at around that 27%. So essentially what this is saying is you have enough reserves to get through about a quarter of the year without any other revenue sources. Any questions on that? <coughs> All right, the next uh, topic is uh, general obligation debt. And so this is an area of focus for, you know, people that, outsiders that look at your financial statements as well. Um, also a measure of, of, you know, liquidity and financial health as well. So um, general obligation debt is secured by the tax levy. Uh, the utilities may have some revenue debt outstanding um, but that is secured by user fees in general. Uh, so general obligation debt is, is uh, limited by statute. Um, it can only, you can only have as much outstanding that equals 5% of the city's equalized value. So um, if we look at this chart here, you'll see the black line represents the debt capacity. So that is 5% of equalized value, which does change over time as the value of the city um, increases. Then the green line here is actual general obligation debt outstanding in those same years. And so you'll see, you know, space between there, which is good, which means that you're not at your maximum. Um, the actual percentage uh, outstanding in compared to your um, maximum amount is 55% at the end of 21. Um, that that uh, percentage is kind of, you know, hovered around there. It, it's probably, it's been down and it, it's up a little bit higher this year uh, because there was a $2 million debt issuance in 21 uh, for some street projects and, and other um, capital items. So um, <coughs> if it, it's expected that that will fluctuate over time as debt is issued and then 
down over the course of time. So 55% is not a bad place to be. Right around 50% is perfectly you know, acceptable. I see some municipalities are, are higher than that, some are lower. Um, once you get into like the 70 to 80 range, that's getting a little on the high side. So uh, right where you're at is, is perfectly fine. Um, you know, wouldn't raise any eyebrows uh, by a, you know, a, a bond council or anything like that. Um, the last page here um, also uh, takes your debt service, your annual principal and interest payments and compares it to um, your non-capital costs in your uh, governmental funds. And so um, you'll see this green line here um, took a big uh, decrease in the 2019 time frame. I believe that is about the time when a couple of the TIFs closed and those debts uh, were then uh, paid off at that time. Um, so right now, debt service is about 10% of the, the city's uh, operating costs, which um, is pretty low. 20% um, or being under 20% is about the, uh, the kind of the benchmark that I've seen used quite often. And so this just says that, you know, you have a pretty low percent of your costs are actually going to pay your debt down. So some data down here below um, in 21 and 20, just comparing principal and interest uh, over those years with the non-capital um, costs as well. So that's what feeds into uh, that ratio. Questions? What about the skyrocketing value of property? How is that going to affect our, our debt calculation there? Yeah, I mean, if, you know, the, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I know governments tend to be a little bit more reactive and it takes a little bit of time before those equalized values you know, that are determined by the state really catch up um, with those, with inflationary um, num uh, increases and stuff, but um, it, it probably will, um, you'll probably see an increase over time um, because of that, but I'm, you know, I'm not sure to what extent it will be at this point. It kind of artificially warps our, our debt, It right? does. But if your projects are going to cost you more, too, you know, it's, yeah. it, it probably will move together, you know. Sure. Any other questions? Any other questions? I'm sure it was awesome. She'll watch the tape. Yeah. Yeah, I'll watch the tape. She'll watch it on cable. Any other questions for Amanda? Anything else you want to share with us? Um, no, we just appreciate you, um, you know working with the city each year. Thanks to Megan for um, you know the audit support again this year, and um, we look forward to keeping working with you. Everything went smooth. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Overall, our city is a good financial shape. So, moving back to the agenda, I'll look for a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. by Morose, second by Schuster. Any further discussion, questions, or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Right. Opposed? <coughs> carry. Approval of the minutes of previous meetings. Is there a motion to that effect? Motion by Grattan. Second by Evans. Any further discussion on this? See none. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry. Move minutes to intervening means? Is there a motion to that effect? Second. Motion by Schuster. Second by Morales. Any further discussion? See none. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry. Okay, at this time, we'll have the public hearing in regards to the assessments for East Oak Street reconstruction. I'll entertain a motion to open the public hearing portion of the, this meeting. Motion by Grattan, second by Schuster. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Evans? Aye. Grattan? Aye. Morales? Aye. Schuster? Aye. 
for those of, of you in attendance that don't know us, I'm Dan Wagner, I'm your mayor. We have Kay Burroughs representing the First Ward, along with Richard Evans representing the First Ward. We have the two Third Ward aldermen, which affect your project, uh, which is John Schuster and Dave Gratton. And unfortunately, we're short two aldermen from the Second Ward due to previous conflicts and obligations. This time I'm going to open it up to Jason Lau. He's our contracted engineer from MSA who did the calculations for assessments. I'm going to give you an explanation about how it came with these numbers. Somebody come up there? Yes. Yeah. By all means. Sit here just so my voice carries enough. All right. Thank you, Dan, and uh, welcome everyone. So uh, I, I know I've recognized a lot of your faces from the public informational meeting, but um, for any of you that didn't make it to that, I'll just give a brief overview of the reason that we're doing this, and that is to replace the uh, deteriorating utility and roadway infrastructure uh, along Oak Street from the Highland Street intersection to the Eastern Termini. Uh, the project is going to involve the uh, uh, reconstruction of the sanitary sewer mainline pipe along that section of street, as well as the sanitary laterals from the main to the right-of-way line. It'll also include the water main replacement uh, along that section, as well as the water services from the main to the right-of-way line. We'll be extending a bunch of new storm sewer up the roadway to address a lot of drainage issues, um, both on, on the roadway itself, but then some, also some uh, backyard drainage issues that have happened, um, again, as we went, talked about at the public informational meeting. And then the project will also involve then the reconstruction of the street uh, infrastructure, which involves the replacement of the gravel base of the roadway, the replacement of the asphalt pavement, the replacement of the curb and gutter on both sides of the street, the replacement of the sidewalk on both sides of the street, and then the driveway aprons um, along the street. Um, notice was sent out by the city, and, and that's the reason why we're all here tonight, is about the special assessments, and there was a preliminary assessment report that was prepared. And what I'll do briefly, as Dan indicated, is just go through this um, um, as brief as I can, just trying to explain how we um, calculated uh, the, the costs for the assessments for each individual property owner along there, and um, and then just some other general information, and then I believe at that point we'll just turn it, or open it up to questions. Okay. okay. So, um, so first off, I guess to um, in order to calculate the um, special assessments, we need to first look at well, what are we, what is the city going to a special assess um, the residents along this particular project, or what they do on any typical project in the city. And per the city's municipal code, section 12.08.08, .08, um, that section of the ordinance reads that the um, entire cost of sidewalk, driveways, and curb and gutter along the pr project will be paid for by the abutting property owners. Now there are some, some credits and things like that for corner lots, but in this case we don't have any of those, um, those residents here. If, if, you are, if you do happen to be the, the two corner lots that are on Highland, you're not paying for any special assessments along the Highland Street project, so therefore those credits don't apply to you because you're not paying twice for two sides of your property. So in this particular case, it's just basically everybody's treated the same with frontage along Oak Street. So then um, the, the next step in the process is identifying what are the quantities of those various items. So for the curb and gutter, for the sidewalk, for the driveways, and how, how are they... Um, specific to each individual property owner uh, because each property um, has a different size to it um, as it abuts against the project. And so what we first start off with is we use a Dodge County tax parcel mapping. For those of you that are maybe familiar with it, you can go on Dodge County's website. They have a GIS mapping tool on there that shows all the parcel maps um, and, and parcels within communities and in the townships. We use that mapping to determine what the width of your property is or the frontage um, that, of your property that abuts up against the, the proposed project area. And then using that frontage, we calculated um, those three various items, the curb and gutter, the driveways, and the sidewalks um, <coughs> based, on, based on that frontage and then also on the, the project construction plans, which again we highlighted at that public informational meeting. So with the curb and gutter, this, the, the curb and gutter is basically a direct reflection of what your frontage is. If you have a 60 foot wide lot, according to the Dodge, Council, Dodge County tax parcel mapping, it, you would essentially have 60 feet of curb and gutter out in front of your property in the street that um, counts towards your frontage. Um, the sidewalk is a little bit of a, um, of a variable and that is that um, there's two different types of sidewalk. There's the sidewalk that falls underneath your driveway, which is a thicker section of, of concrete 
um, to handle the weight of your car and things driving over it. And then any sidewalk that's not in your driveway is a thinner section of a four inch thick sidewalk. And those, um, those the, the four inch and the six inches reflected in the preliminary assessment report. So the four inch um, thick, the, the non-driveway section of sidewalk was determined by taking your overall frontage. So again, if, if I'm using the example of a 60 foot wide lot, um, it would be the 60 times the, the width of the sidewalk. On this particular project, we're, we're using five foot wide sidewalks. So you'd get a total area <coughs> of that sidewalk. But then what we do is we minus off the sidewalk panels that would fall in your driveway because, again, that's a separate item that's, that's counted towards the driveways, not towards the, the four inch thick sidewalk. So that's how we come up with the quantity of the four inch thick sidewalk. It's the, the total frontage times the width minus off whatever your driveway area happens to be um, within that sidewalk area. And then obviously then the driveway and the, the driveway section of sidewalk is, a, um, is basically just an area calculation of what you have out there right now. Um, I know in some cases, I talked with one person, I'm not sure if you're here tonight or whatever, but um, what we try to do with the driveways is we try to basically match what the width of your driveway is behind the sidewalk. And so if you, if you had a, a 16 foot driveway behind the sidewalk, that was kind of the, the width that we aimed for with a, a slight flare on it as we would typically do for everybody so that um, it can kind of accommodate turning movements in and out of your driveway. Um, as, as I mentioned, there's one driveway in particular where they have a wider section of driveway behind the sidewalk and they actually had a very smaller um, driveway apron existing in the roadway um, and so if that happens to be your case or if you or if for some reason you want to um, also increase the width of your driveway apron we can certainly talk about that but just know that if you do decide to widen your driveway apron obviously then you would be caught, charged a little bit higher assessment to offset that that larger size driveway as well than what's reflected in the report right now um, I know on the report, some of you are probably seeing that there is some asphalt driveway that we, we will be correcting or whatever. That was supposed to be some matching of the driveway that was occurring behind the sidewalk, but after some further review, um, that is not an accessible item, so that, will be, that cost will be borne by the city, and we will be removing that out when we do the final assessments for the project. So, so again, you're, you're primarily just gonna be paying for that curb and gutter that's along your frontage, the sidewalk that's behind there, and then the driveway apron that falls in between the sidewalk and the um, curb and gutter apron. Um, and then in addition to that cost, you may be noticed in the, in the table that there is also a 10% contingency and a 2% administration um, cost that's also built into that. The contingency, um, as it implies, whatever it is, these are, these are preliminary um, quantities right now. And so you, you obviously want, we want to charge you only for what's actually put in. So if the, if the plan calls out for a uh, for instance, a you know 100 foot square square foot driveway section, and they only and the contractor only puts in a 90. Well, then you'll only be charged for the 90. And what we'll do at the end of the construction project is go out and measure up what the actual dimensions were. But these this this report is just to try to give you a, a, a budgetary number of what you can expect your assessment to be. But these numbers are not final. They will be finalized once the construction project is completed and we're able to measure up. Um, specifically the, the, the sidewalk areas that were put in at four inch thick and then the driveway areas and the sidewalk that was put in at six inch thick. Um, lastly, the other thing I'd just like to point out is that uh, um, overall the, the project, um, as shown on like the last page of the assessment report, the total project cost for this was at one million two hundred, I'm sorry, one point two million dollars and change. Um, Again, based on these preliminary numbers, the assessments are, are representing about 16% of the overall cost of the project. So the other, um, essentially 84% of it is being paid for by the city. So I guess that's, uh, I guess the main things that I wanted to highlight, um, anything else to share? Otherwise we'll turn it over to questions, but. I guess just to reiterate that what was spoken at the information meeting, this is one of the final aging streets that we have in the city of Juneau right now. It's probably one of the oldest streets in the city of Juneau and one of them that's been left go for many, many years. So um, that was our focus. We are trying to cut down our infiltration into our treatment plant because of the le leaking sewer lines and what have you. This is all gonna have a, a huge impact on it as well as uh, the stormwater issues there that have been encountered year in and year out in that block. So. Um, I know these assessments look huge to anybody paying them. We do offer a six-year payment plan. 
on assessments through your taxes and whatever with the with the at the percentage rate that we borrow the money at, and then also a small administration fee if you want to pay it over six years on your property taxes. So we try to do everything we can. Our community actually assesses very low or includes uh, very few assessments to the property owner compared to many other communities. I mean, you want to touch upon that in other communities? They yeah, I mean. All the communities are very are very different. I mean, there are some that are lower. There are also some that are higher. And just to give you a sense of the, of, of at least one of the higher ones that I'm aware of that we work with at MSA is uh, the village of Cleveland, um, and their their assessments are um, so they actually assess when you when you break it down. They're they're probably close to a 60 or to a 75 percent assessment of the total project cost. So of that. 1.2 million, you'd be, you know, if you were in the village of Cleveland, you'd be paying 60 to 75 percent of that cost. Um, they charge 75 percent of all the roadway costs, the, the gravel, the curb, every, all of that. Um, they actually assess the uh, for the storm sewer main um, when it's under a certain size, and that's 75 percent that goes to the residents. They charge, they assess for all of the utility laterals um, from the main to the houses. Um, any shoulders or ditches they charge 100% for, driveways they assess 100% for, and sidewalk they assess 100% for. So just to give you some perspective, if you were if you were somebody that lived in that community and you had um, a frontage of about, you know, say an 80, 80 foot front, um, you know, frontage lot or whatever, you'd be paying close to 20 to $25,000 for your assessment if you lived in that community. So as the saying goes, it could be worse. <laughs> we don't live there. Exactly, and that's why I, after I found that out, I will never move there. So at this time, we'll open it up for questions. I ask that you state your name and your address for the record, and uh, feel free to ask anything that you'd like to ask. If you want to, uh, this is Joe Shasha. Uh, I live on East Oak Street in Juneau. If you um, want to What's your, what's your address, Joe? Your address. P.O. Box 42. <laughs> uh, if you want to stretch that out, what's the procedure for notifying the city? Do you just tack on uh, one sixth of it when you pay your taxes, or what? Megan, I mean, how do, what's the procedure for making that election? Um, you know, I, I come up with a process. I don't know if maybe you want to make. Um, you know, we'd, we'd set up like a payment plan. Okay. Thank you. It is up to the property owner to approach City Hall and say, hey, I'd like to break this down. I'd like to break that down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is there a hand up over there or something? Yeah. Yes. Linda Cook, 604. Um, who is the general contractor for this? For this one, it, the project hasn't been awarded yet, but right now the low bidder on the project is Sofer. Construct, or a sober sewer and water out of, uh, I believe it's Green <coughs> Bay is where they're out of, based out of, but it's, it's sober sewer and water. One of the reasons I asked is, you know, uh, as you know, we, they took some trees down on our street, and they were told that they didn't have the contract for those particular trees. They shouldn't have come down, but they're down. And so I just want to make sure that we're not going to see a double charging for that. Nope. And, and in fact, the, as luck would have it, the city will actually see a, a, a reduced cost because of that. Mm -hmm. And when are they going to clean up the chips, the wood chips? <laughs> uh, Scott Carpenter is making a phone call to the general on the other project right now to take care of that. So there's a, there's a phone call out there. <laughs> you had a question? Oh. Yeah. So that one? No, go ahead. Okay. So you broke uh, Keith Irwin, 642 East Oak. Um, you broke down how you guys figure out the frontage and whatnot, but you never explained, like for me, and since I have 76 feet of frontage, now is that taking out when you figure out the curb, the 17 feet for the approach or the 12 feet? Because you said you charge us on our frontage. Well, if the approach is already there, technically that's not curb, correct? No, the, 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 curb, the curb is continuous along the entire frontage of your property. Obviously, where, the dr where your driveway is going to be, there's still going to be curb there, but it's just the, the head of the curb, that back portion is going to be knocked down so that it's, it's drivable. But there's still, it's still a, a continuous um, two and a half foot wide panel of concrete that represents the curb and gutter along there. It's just whether or not it has that curb head on the back of it or whether it's got a driveway section 
is what we call it. Okay. Thank you for the explanation. My next question is, is when the city or whoever originally put this road in and put the substructure in and put all the curb in, well, my property is 20 feet short of what your assessment is. There's 20 feet where there is no curb. So if the curb has never been there, why am I paying for the city to have it put in? The original contract, whoever paid for it the first time should have paid for it. I'm not going to pay for it this time. That's not fair. I understand the need for new sidewalk because you guys say we need it because we got to move it 18 inches. I understand that you, you know this project has to get done because of the infiltration. But I don't understand why I have to foot the bill for 20 feet of curb when whoever put it in in the first place and paid for it in the first place, it never happened. So you must be on the very eastern end, is that where? Uh, 642 East Oak, it's on your map. Okay. Well. And then on top of it, you guys have Dan Tall's property over the property line onto my property according to your drawing. Oh, okay, so yep, I didn't uh, speak we to talked. you about that, yep, okay. Now I've seen nothing updated, you have not contacted me since I gave you that heads up, nothing. So now I'm here tonight wanting to know what's gonna happen with that. Yep. Well, let's, let's first address your first question. So about that curb and gutter that, that wasn't there before, so right now, the, the curb just it's is missing there. in that section or whatever? It's not there. Okay. It's a finished curb that goes back up towards, or it goes to the south towards my house. For 20 feet from there, down to Dan Tool's pro our property line, there is no curb. Okay. Well, I'm, I guess what's, what's, how, how it's typically viewed is, is that even, even if you had curb there, even if you don't have curb there, like say somebody else doesn't have any curb or whatever, and, and then the city is going to put curb in, that's, that is still a benefit to you, but it hasn't been a benefit for the four years I've lived here. Well, right, because it hasn't been, so it I, doesn't I, exist out there now, but when the project is done, you, that there will be curb and gutter in that 20 feet, so then it will be. So the city should put the bill for it, because it should have been put in originally. And then I wouldn't be having this conversation, because then that's just part of the deal. You guys are ripping everything out, great, cool. Can't change that, but why should I pay for it initially? Well, I guess that, my understanding is, is that that's how, that's how the policy is written. I mean, we certainly can talk individually with you or whatever and, sure. and work that out, but yeah, I guess you that's... just let me know when and where and I'll be there. Okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, Neil Whiting, 624. About five, six years ago, I put in a brand new approach for my driveway. So I'm wondering, is there any way that uh, can work around that without tearing the whole thing out and making me pay for another new one? Uh, I, I'm sorry, I missed the first part of that. So you have, so you have new, you, you have some new sidewalk pan, new sidewalk panels that you put in, or, or no, the drive? approach. Oh, the approach is new. Yeah. How how new? It's about five six years old. Um, so according to the according to the municipal code, if that was put in within five years, and you can provide documentation proving that it was installed within that five years, then then you would not have to pay assessments on that. Okay. I mean, is there any way of them working around it? Uh, just cutting off what they need to, and even the rest. Specific, well, for specifically the portion of, of where the where the curb between the curb and the sidewalk, or I mean the the roadway where there's there's some drainage issues out there that we're <coughs> trying to deal with. So the, the road is getting tweaked a little bit. So I can't say with any certainty or whatever that your driveway, the way that it exists right now, will be able to still work with the new roadway design. Mm -hmm. And so it still might have to come out for that reason. We can, I can certainly look at your address and. You know, we can we could possibly look at that possibility, but I guess I don't want to get your hopes up and say that we can. I guess it's something we'll have to look at, but there is a possibility that the, the new sidewalk profile and the new curb profile won't, won't work with where your driveway is existing. But again, if you've got the documentation to prove that that was installed within the, the last five years, um, then yeah, then then you would not be assessed for that that driveway approach. Okay. So uh, yes, uh, I too. Uh, replace my driveway. Uh, first, the entire driveway from my garage and around behind my house all the way up to the road. Uh, between reclamation, stone, and replacing the driveway cost me a third of what I'm being charged to replace just the apron, the sidewalk, the curb, and the gutter. So somewhere's along the line, something's way wrong. I did the work myself, uh, me and my brother. Uh, it doesn't <coughs> say in Point five here. It just says uh, if it's in good condition, not within five, four or five years or whatever with documentation. I paid cash for it, okay? So I don't have documentation, but I have pictures. It's in pristine condition. I have 50% of my sidewalk is brand new. There's one section that's cracked, 
I understand I'd, I'd have to pay for that. Something that, that was replaced, not really sure how it cracked, but it did. But the entire apron is basically brand new. I feathered the curb in myself so it matches, you can't even tell. I widened it because the street is so narrow and people park right there, they have to. There's, there's, there's just nowhere to park anywhere there. So I had to widen the apron in order to be able to back out safely into the road without hitting people. Uh, if, I, if I may, what, what's your address? 649, Six I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Um, when it says there's, there's uh, a credit available if, if your apron or sidewalk is in good condition. So as far as I'm concerned, my driveway apron does not need to be replaced. Well, it does now because they came through with utilities and cut it to pieces. Uh, but I have pictures of it. I think somebody should go out and take pictures, maybe take some measurements, and take pictures and count how many panels don't need to be replaced. And that amount of concrete should come off of my assessment. I should not have to pay <coughs> twice for my sidewalk and my, and my driveway apron. That's just not right. I didn't ask you to come and replace the road. I know it needs to be. But I've already done that portion for you. And so I don't see why I should have to pay for it a second time. Um, I'd, I'd really like somebody to come and look at it and say, you know what, yeah, you're right. And we're going to take this portion off your assessment. Or yeah. you can just have a damn house. I, I think it's just ridiculous. I think. Um, Scott Carpenter, the city DPW, and me can meet with you, and then and then also with you too. Um, so what I'll do is before you guys leave, I'll I'll give you my business card, and we can get a, a, a meeting scheduled. Sure. You find a time right across the street. Us. from can do it all at once if you want. Yep, sure. <clears throat> that sounds good. So, yes. Hi, Tim Gassner. Um, it's a little bit about me. For some of them don't know that I was a superintendent of water utility here for several years. Um, it's according to what the mayor said. You know that street has been bad for a long time. So my disappointment with this whole thing is that we put it off that long. It's been on the agenda for 20 years to be redone, and now we put it on the agenda at the time when inflation and everything costs four times what it did before. There's nobody on our street that makes or lives in a 200 to 300 thousand dollar house. No. no one. So now we're paying exuberant amounts of money for this curb gutter and sidewalk. He's got new stuff over. He's got a problem. They all have different things with it. All right, so I mean, this is kind of crazy right now. What they should do is kick the can down the road for another two years. But the infrastructure underneath is extremely terrible. It should have been done a long time ago before two or three other street projects were done. The other thing is, um, I guess we, we qualified for a CDBG grant, which is only taking in Highland Street. So it's not doing anything for us on Oak Street. And that's correct. And there, there are other grants available that would help us out. And the reason I know that is because I brought a young woman to a meeting four years ago when we were doing some different things. She's from an a engineering firm in, in Portage. And she, I met her at a, a rural water convention. And she gave a presentation up there. And she knows grants. She knows them. She knows how to get money. She told me today, I talked to her on the phone this morning. She told me about um, Marquezan. They got all kinds of street projects going on up there. And she's got money for them that almost covers three quarters of the cost of everything. There's money available. She says, right now, it's tremendous how much money's available. So I'm disappointed that the city hasn't done anything with, with grant writing and done anything other than one grant. Um, there are monies out there available. If MSA can't find it or doesn't know how to do it, then we need to get somebody who does. Let's get on this. And we looked into different options for this street. And, and actually, we did a CDBG income survey for this. This, pro this block did not quali income qualify. Well, Okay, yes. we'll, we'll touch on that. And that was one. There were some of them that, that were called, people came out and asked is how much you made. People are reluctant to say that. What she told me today was you, see, there's, a, there's a dollar amount. Either you make above it or below it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you don't have to answer how much you make. Just answer, are you above it or below it? So a lot of it, well, we didn't, we didn't uh, qualify down in our new block because some people didn't answer. And I know they didn't. I don't ever remember being asked that. Furthermore, it doesn't matter how much I make. Just because somebody's got a lesser paying job than me doesn't mean I should pay more for something. You know, taxes maybe, but the taxes already are, are coming out. I pay those. If I if I add this on at the end of the year, you know, I, my taxes are escrowed. I'm not going to get a bigger check from the bank. I'm going to have to come up with that. 
just because I make more money than some other people on my street or anywhere else in town or less money or whatever, doesn't mean I got $6,000 just laying around to piss away on a road. I'm a single father. My neighbors just had a baby. They're young kids, and I know that they would not have the money for this. This is going to be a tremendous hardship for certain people. Oh, yeah. People are going to have to sell and move, mm -hmm. you know, something. So if there is any grant money out there, which I know there is, there's an LR, LRIP grant that we could qualify for. It comes through the county, and I believe that's available now again. It's every couple of years. I mean, that's one of them, and there's many others. Um, her name is Elizabeth. Dan, you saw her. She's, that's what she does. And she, we today people, we talked we for an hour. That do that too. But obviously they didn't find any money. We well, gotta find some money. Yeah. We gotta do something. Right now, concrete, when Tom talked about what that driveway cost and all we do is garage, this is costing four times that. Back then, concrete wasn't $170 a yard. Yeah, yeah. there's no doubt about that. I mean, yeah. prices are up right now. Yeah. It's, just, it's just the way that the market and right is. Right now, we're doing it down in an area where we live in the oldest homes and the oldest damn street in the city. <laughs> Where do you think we're getting this from? I don't know, you look around the room, everybody can say the same thing, can't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. If this goes on my taxes, I'm gonna be forced to sell and move. I have a five-year-old little boy. I was recently divorced, yes, I'm not ashamed of that. My problem is, is I live paycheck to paycheck, making sure that he has everything he needs and I can get back and forth to work. I work cash jobs, I work everything I possibly have been can, and then to come home to a $7,300 bill that should have been taken care of 15, 20 years ago when prices were cheap. This will literally put me on the brink of having to sell my home and move out of this town. And have you, have any of you on this board or in front of me right now have looked for housing? Have you? Hmm. Have any of you looked for housing right now? It's out of this world. Yeah. Okay. It's out of this world. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So where am I supposed to live? Where am I supposed to go? How am I supposed to tell my five-year-old son that we have to move and we got to find someplace else to live and less standards, lower standards? Because the city of Juneau didn't go out and get some damn grants to help us all out. We pay taxes every year. We bank on knowing exactly what we owe you guys every year. Yes, there's a little inflation here and there for school projects, whatever, whatever. We get that. I understand that. And I'm sure everyone sitting behind me and next to me understands that too. But to come up with $7,300? Well, you can put it on your taxes for seven years. Yeah, my house payment goes up. I'm a single father. I bring home $3,400 a month. I pay $1,080 a month. What do you think that's gonna do to my taxes? You gonna come and help me? You gonna buy me groceries every couple of weeks so I can survive, any of you? I know every one of my neighbors would have my back. If they needed it, I'd help them, they'd help me. But what's the city gonna do to help us? This is ridiculous. Why are we doing this on a year where inflation is what, 40, 50%? Who the hell would ever think that we can afford this as a community? I'm not asking the city to foot the bill, I'm asking the city to go out there and get some grants. Hell, if you want help, it looks to me like you have 20 or so people here that will do any bad work you ask us to. Why aren't we doing this? I don't want you to think that there wasn't any effort made. I, I don't, so, I'm not saying there isn't. Like, I no, know you, I mean, there's, there's but definitely But obviously there's been more options out there. Because if you and can make a single phone call, and there's this, this grant I, that's possible through the county, there's got to be money So there. I have looked in the grant um, with the county, and that's something that's still being worked out. Unfortunately, it's not anything that, you know, happens overnight. So yeah. I am aware of that. Um, we did qualify for an LIR or LRIP grant for, you know, a minimal amount. It looks like previous to when I started, it was less than like 10000 but it was something. But, you know, I have been working with MSA, um, you know, and some different ladies that, you know, do the grant stuff. Um, you know, it sounded like nothing, we didn't qualify for much or anything. Um, and I am I, not picking on you guys. I'm, and, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I just want to tell you because the, the effort has been made. Yes, so I, don't I, want I anyone believe you to have, but, you know, that's not all you do every day. But, you know, maybe that's, I can, you know, this <coughs> hook up with you and I can get the information from you. This young lady, I, that's all I she does. Here, so. So at this point in time, at this era, when things are so expensive, we need to get somebody in here that that's all they do and they know where it is. Yeah, yep, and we can always touch base. Mm -hmm. I can get that information from you and you know, I'm more than willing to you reach out. You're busy every day. This yeah. takes time. I was on there for, for a couple of days. My God, there's so much stuff to read. 
yeah. then find out that at the end you don't qualify for anyways. But I mean, right, um, right. So, you know, it's, it's something that we can talk about. But I want everyone to to know that the attempt was there, and you know, the city was trying to to find some grant money. But it sounds like you know, we either didn't qualify or some of those or grants are not worth you know. You, you might get something, but all the red tape or all the administration that goes into it, if it's not a big enough project or you don't get enough money towards it, it's just not feasible to, to go after it. I mean, and there, there were some of those cases where we could have gotten something, but in the end it would have cost the city more because of all the hoops and the red tape that you have to jump through. Or in some cases you got to pay federal wage rates and you know there's just there's different components to it as you mentioned whatever and some of it I get that comes down to a qualification some again, of it comes it down takes to somebody that has been doing it and that's all they do that's not all you do either I mean you got people in the office that's not all they do all day yes it is this, the ladies, this that, she she the ladies that she mentioned we have a whole team that's yeah. dedicated to funding and that's all they do and that's all you can find is one grant that's all that that was feasible for it's, the projects as they stood and not what I was told today well, you and I can, you know, we there. can touch base, but I also want to throw out there, you know, Dan and myself, uh, we went in front of, you know, Dodge County to see if we could get some ARPA funding for some road projects that are going on. Um, you know, it sounds like we were in the line for, for some money. I asked her about, you know, 500 some thousand, and mm -hmm. I haven't gotten a response yet, but I'm taking that as a good thing because we haven't been denied. Exactly. So, you know, there's been attempts reaching out and doing different things, so just so everyone's and aware I'm sorry of that. if I get and feel a little rough this way or whatever, I'm getting down on you, I don't know what you've all done, mm -hmm. but just the, the conversation I had with her this morning, it was pretty uplifting, like, there's money, there's gotta be money out there, mm -hmm. she knows it. Yeah, You know. been trying. I had her out here for one meeting and she, she gave a presentation for like an hour. She could talk about it for an hour. Well, we'll touch base then. I think most of that conversation is more geared towards utility. It doesn't matter. It was, she does all these projects. But this she money. didn't share anything as far as roadways and stuff. Well, she knows that too. Plus, you know, we're doing infrastructure on the street, which is all part of it. Well, you weren't going to do one without the other. No. So that's my opinion about things. Other than the assessment on what you're going to do about any of that is what it is. Costs are costs. But I'm just disappointed we didn't find some way of getting us to money. And plus the timing. I mean, right now when everything is higher to kite, we're all struggling to pay for groceries, gas, and whatever else. Now we're going to get this whammy. You know? And like I said, nobody lives in a two, three, four hundred thousand dollar house on our end of the street. We're on the, we're on the south side of tracks. <laughs> On top of that, we're not going to have any access to our homes. We don't have the bike trail behind us like Highland Ave does, you know. Uh, and my, I, I, I'm seriously considering just piling all my trash at the end of my driveway because I'm not going to walk it two and a half, three blocks down the road to have somebody pick it up and then try and figure out where my trash cans are. The guys that come and pick it up now will pick it up on, on, the, on the curb where I put it, and it's usually laying in the approach of my driveway because... <clears throat> Well, I guess just because they're inconsiderate. But, it, it, well, I'm trying to be polite. But <laughs> I'm not going to walk my cans down at the end of the block to do that. You know, I just will not do it. I'll pile it up if I have to. And at the end of the year, or whenever this is done, then somebody can come and get it all. Because it's ridiculous. How many people on this street want to It's Tim's further down than I am, for crying out loud. Do you want to walk your trash out in the corner? Mm -hmm. I, I, you know. No, I don't I, know what they're going to do with that yet, Tom. I, I, it's it's just ridiculous, you know. If this leads into the winter time, am I supposed to snow blow a path over to Center Ave so my wife can walk to her car to get to work in the morning? Well, I can I can tell you something. When they did Leonard Street, the the people up there always were, the, the construction crew always gave them a path to get in and out. And the guys right now that were working down there, they move out of the way of the garbage truck and they actually took the garbage cans out to them. Mm -hmm. they, they're they're pretty decent. I, I don't know if we really have to worry about that. Well, I sure hope not. I don't think so. I really don't. I just feel like we should be able to have access to our driveways. I got two or three thousand dollars worth of tools in my truck at any given time. I, you know, I mean, I don't want to park it on some other street where I can't keep an eye on it. You know, I mean, it's locked up in my driveway for crying out loud. You know, I don't. I, I. What if I got to run out and grab something out of it? I got to go to another street over. You know, 
know, it's just ridiculous. It's, it's, it's a headache. I understand it's stuff that's got to be done. But like right now, they dig up the road. Certain times of the day you can't get through whatever it is, what it is. But then by a certain time, you're able to get to your house. You know, I'm hoping that that's going to be a possibility for us. Even if even if it's driving down the sidewalk, I don't care. I got four with uh, yeah. Tom, I don't, I don't think that's going to be a problem. I seriously don't. Right. After they did up on, on Leonard, nah. Yeah, I mean, the, the, and the contractor is aware, is aware of the access issues to no. it, so obviously that, that is part of their contract is to, uh, you know, do what they can to accommodate you guys both on the garbage side and on the access side. Again, as you mentioned, there is going to be times when, yeah, they, they may have things shut down for a little bit because they're, they're also trying to get the work done. Understandable. And uh, you know, and, and trying to minimize how long this is going to drag out for everyone. But, yeah, I mean... I've already had several conversations with the contractor. They're well aware of the concerns with the access, and so you know it, it's just going to be one of those things where we get to construction. They're going to do what they're going to try to do to accommodate, and if, if, if people still um, feel that you know more is necessary, I mean, feel free to contact the city, and we can kind of continue to work with the contractor to make it better if, if, if there's a way to do that. Sure, sure. So they, they know that too because emergency services still have to come down. Yeah, yep, right. yep, the so I mean, they has they, to they will keep going. I, I don't have any problem with that. Yes. <laughs> so the so the contractor is looking to start here probably in September is what I've been told. Um, they're they're trying to get some of their material deliveries and again with the supply you know issues and and, and whatnot uh, they're they're start, still trying to get that figured out. But what we've been told is uh, towards kind of later September maybe mid September they want to get started and then they want to get the bulk of the utility work down and get gravel down on the roadway. Um, they don't we don't think they're going to be able to get. Uh, much of the paving, if any of it, done this year, just because we don't want to be paving when it's too cold, and then we get a bad product um, uh, as far as the paving work goes. So more than likely, whatever what they're going to do is try to get the gravel course down of, asp uh, of, uh, of for the roadway, have give you guys that the ability to access in and out during the winter times. The city's going to do their best to keep that plowed, um, and then the paving work will happen then you know first first in the spring or whatever once the asphalt plants and stuff open back up. So we won't be assessed until after. Everything is done? Correct. So probably do as much Correct. So now with you saying that, this is the latest that ever started a street project in town, you know that. So the last time they did Center Street, first off the sidewalks are like this. I don't want to see that. Yeah, I don't, don't want to see that. That's not gonna fly. The other thing is, it got into deer hunting season. Oh, we're all taking off to go deer hunting, so we're hurrying up and doing things half fast. Um Mm. I hope that don't happen. September 17th. Yeah. Our bow hunt will open up. Yeah. And if they're anything like me, that's where your thought goes. You start getting to Friday. I'm in construction. I know how it goes. Hey, yeah, I'm leaving at noon today. Sorry, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be underground utilities on the gravel base. Nothing outside of the curb is going to be basically touched until. Other than the laterals. Correct. Right. But yeah. So, I mean, the sidewalk would stay in place for as long as possible, other than, uh, as I said, a, a few cuts through there or whatever for the utilities, but they'll probably put, I would assume, put back some temporary gravel through those panels of sidewalk that got taken out. So, again, that's still an accessible path on each side of the roadway. Um, the, the road will be, you know, um, disturbed or whatever as part of the utility work, but again, they're planning on bringing in some gravel and, and trying to keep at least one lane open during construction so that people can come and, come and go, with the exception of if they're doing something right in the way of that or ever for an hour or two and then get they'll get it opened back up as soon as they can. So I, I guess no questions. I mean, I, this isn't the meaning of bringing this up, but I guess if I missed the first couple because I wasn't in town. So about how, how wide is this street going to be? I guess I didn't look. And this, somebody told me going to allow parking on both sides. Isn't that going to be kind of like not changing anything? Like, you, like Tom said, he would have made his driveway wider. I was going to Asked if I could do that too, because my God, you can't get out of that thing. Yep. Yeah. Well, 30. It's uh, it's 37 feet back to back. So from the so basically the the, the, the drivable section of it would be 36 feet wide, and that's that's meeting. So right now it's what 24. So 22. Yeah, 20. <laughs> yeah, it's about 23, 22 feet. Okay. I mean, if, you cut, if you count the, the curb and gutter so that's out there right now. Four feet from each side? Yeah, yeah, but it's pretty much an even even yeah. take on either side. Pretty much duplicate Depot Street. Yep. 
Why, you why is the sidewalk moving on one side and not the other? Why is it moving? Yeah. Because because it wasn't really installed where where it belonged on the on the lot line or ever before. It looks normal to me on either side. Well, on the, the, the well, which which side are you referring to, Tim? On the north side. On the north. The north side is the normal side. Or the north or the north side is where it's moved. Seems like it's That's moving. That's where it's going to move it. Yeah. And on that side, on, on that side, whatever it's it's currently like two feet or so off of the off the lot line, and from the city's standard, we want that about six inches off the lot line or off the right away so line. So it's got to move north. The, the sidewalk is going to shift, yeah, closer to the. Closer to the right-of-way line, so it's going to shift a little more but, on that but side. But the tree border is the same on both sides of the street right now. So how come that was done that way? I don't know. That was done how many years ago? It was before my time. And mine too. <laughs> we can't ask that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. The 400 block presently doesn't line up with the 300 block. If you go down the street there and see how it jogs in for the north. Well, that don't matter. We go take sidewalk around telephone poles and fire items. I mean, <laughs> well, how wide is that? Is there, you, you want 18 inches, you're moving the sidewalk? And you're, yeah, so because the sidewalk's still out, I mean, it's still going to be it's it's still going to be an eight and a half foot terrace on each on each side. Wait. The neighbors next to me, the sidewalk's going to be at their porch. <laughs> and then 641. My neighbor and I are driving are together, and our porches are. Your apart. name, Brian. What, what's that? Your name. Right, it's medium on it's really easy to hold. And there's five feet of grass in there. And on your little picture you show that concrete all the way through. Between between the shared drives between the, or between the aprons. The, the approaches. Okay. And uh, so if you're saying you're only assessing the end once you measured. So do you well, want the grass to stay in the middle there? Well but on your no, I would like concrete, but I to pay that much more for it. Because on your picture you show it all the way through. Right? Together. Okay. Well, so, if if we put it all the way through, then you would be assessed for it. If you want it, if you want that grass to minimize or to keep that as small as possible, we can certainly make that change. Obviously, with the contractor before we get okay, to that so point, but we just need to know that. You're drawing is wrong. Then. Yeah. You're I'm not, not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying what we did was is because it, we recognize that as a shared driveway. When you when you try to put the taper in there, so that when you're trying to turn into your driveway versus the other person's, you're not going driving over that grass. We filled that in or whatever as what we thought would be an improvement for you. And obviously another and it will be, I agree, but okay. at 140 bucks a yard. And then and, and as I said, whatever if you don't want that because you would rather keep your your assessment cost down, we can certainly put it back the way that it was and and it, 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 okay. just how it, how it'll be. Because seventy one hundred dollars less while we're ready to die so um, okay. was there any sewer levels adjusted? Pardon? Was any of the sewer laterals addressed? Is anybody replacing them or get a contractor who does that? The, for the, the, home for the, the private side? Or? Home to the, well, from the home to the I can answer that block. for you. So I just had Beaver plumbing over mm -hmm. to do a bunch of work. And he, when he's walking outside, he says, have you talked to anybody about replacing? Because they will burst from the house mm -hmm. to the road. They have a guy that will come out and assess it for you. You can have more room. money. Yeah. Um, Another fifteen hundred bucks or so. Uh, no, thirty-five hundred to four thousand. Oh, can yeah. we get a quote for five? Oh, so on top of having six or seven grand, just a whip right out of your pocket, pull another four, and you can have your your lateral solid all the way out to the road. But Beaver Plumbing will come and burst it for you. Hmm. Sweet. Yeah. Yes. Jeremy Jacobson, six seventy-five. I have a gravel approach. Do I have to pay for an approach until I already don't have one? If I get one? In between the sidewalk and the curb? Yeah. I'm at the dead end. Yep. Yeah, you're at the I'm all gravel. And you're all you're all gravel even up to the edge of the roadway just yeah. because of the way that it dead ends right now or whatever. Well right? how is the dead end gonna get done? Are you putting a cold sack or <clears throat> that that's being explored to try to put because at least fit well, something in the end there. But in an approach, then trucks are just going to run over and crack the cement anyways. I I work in cement, so I know what's going to crack. Trucks yeah. are too heavy for the approach. I mean, we, the the city hasn't made any final decisions on that, but we have looked at you know what you know could we fit like a, a hammerhead turnaround at the end, which is basically like a T section, or or actually trying to fit a smaller call the sack. It might it won't meet. Um, it won't meet what the city ordinance is, but at least we can fit something in there so that it, you know to try to keep 
you know, cars when they have to turn around out of this, those driveways potentially. I'm not worried about cars. I'm worried about the trucks. The way the trucks are packed to approach right. as you guys enter the approach, if that's the case, I'd rather just keep it grabbing. Okay. That hasn't been an option in the past, Jason. Yeah, I know. I, well, no, I'm just I didn't mean, I didn't mean okay. Yeah. I, just, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. If one of the city trucks <laughs> crack the approach, I'm not going to pay for it to get fixed again. Yeah, well, you, you got an yeah, interesting. They're, they're constantly turning around from my driveway. You got an interesting thing right. there. I don't think that's your driveway. <laughs> I think I that's so in that street right away. <laughs> uh, his driveway isn't there. I don't know how you deal with that. Would you be opposed losing your terrace area in construction of a of a cul-de-sac there? What for a new road? If we we are. Unfortunately, we weren't able to acquire any land from the oh, you from the abutting yeah, farmland. I'm not going to continue that street. No, no, you're not following what I'm saying. Oh. We weren't able to acquire land from the, oh, the, the uh, from the field from the field from the property owner there. Mm -hmm. Would you be opposed if we did a miniature cul-de-sac at the end and you lost your terrace area in front of your house? In other words, the roadway would come up to your mm -hmm. sidewalk. I, I guess we have to talk about it. But I guess he's yeah. strong. Well, that he's would strong. actually eliminate his driveway approach then. Right. Yep. It would be part of the roadway. I, I have to see a picture, some kind of diagram of okay. what you're talking about. As, as with those gentlemen, I'll give you a, a, one of my cards or whatever before you leave, if, if possible, and then just reach out to me and we can get a time set up and talk to you out there and we can kind of show you yeah. in the field yeah, kind of what we're thinking. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Dave Minchow, 667. Uh, so you said you're taking four feet from, from our side. How do you guys plan on making sure that us that have the steep driveways aren't going to bottom out? Just because we, we still have... Are they raising the street? We, we are in, in some, where, wherever there is that issue, like, okay. I, think, I think you're right, yours was one of those cases where it was a steeper driveway. So yeah, the road is getting picked up slightly so that we can keep your driveway approach to what, what's deemed a typical standard, which is around a six to six to seven percent slope okay. or whatever, or, or in some cases it's, it's less, but trying to kind of hit that, that sweet spot with slopes or whatever and not get too crazy where it's going to be, you know, like a 12 percent where you might bottom out if you had mm -hmm. a low, you know, so low riding car. How are you going to do that because the property's on the south side of the road? They're almost level. So if you raise the road, now the road's higher than those properties, so the water's going to be a little bit yeah. The cross slopes are, mm -hmm. are, are are tweaking a little bit. Yeah. So it's, so so the curve... I mean, that's a pretty delicate thing you're going to do there. You can really trust those contractors to do it that way. They do it all the time. <laughs> okay. And that's that's what and that's why we're out there observing. That's why we're out there. We, we stake it for them. Well, South Highland has that. Yeah? And if you look at it, the road is crested on the east side. It is, yes. Yeah. Did a nice job. So we're assuming it can be duplicated. I hope so. Any other questions from the public? Mr. Cook? Minute, minute. Okay, you know exactly what we're going to be assessed. Um, so when when the construction project is done, which you you all see kind of out there, because all the paving work will be done at that point, the, the the grass will start to grow or whatever at that point, that's when we'll measure up what the final quantities of the concrete and the assessable items are here. We'll prepare a final final assessment report, which is going to look exact, pretty much like this, except for the numbers, the quantity numbers will be adjusted for each individual resident to represent what was measured out in the field. And then those will be available um, to, to view again with Megan or whatever, and then the city will act on, again, um, working with you guys on the, assess on, on the assessments, whether you guys want to pay that all in a lump sum or whether you want to work with the city on a payment plan or you know whatever your individual case would be. There are some people that aren't here and there's some people that may not have internet access. There are some people that work during the week and are, don't have access to city hall because they're closed. So are you going to be sending notices to people, letters to people? Okay, yeah, yeah, so same, um, know what the notice is about tonight. You guys all received that. Um, we can communicate that way. We've been trying to update, you know, the website to make it a little bit, you know, more accessible. 
you know, with any updates on road projects, we've been putting them on there. Right. Um, I am aware that, you know, people don't have access to, to the internet, but, you know, if somebody has a question about something and they work during the day, you know, they can always call and leave a message mm -hmm. and you know, I can touch base when they're available or, you know, provide them information that they may need or email. They don't know that. So I guess what I'm saying is it would be, I think, advantageous no matter what, you and we do that always. Okay. Yep. Well, I will always send you something in the mail. The other thing, that question I have is for MSA. I don't see any labor on these these <coughs> estimates. Um, do you ever pinpoint what the labor costs for all these are? Because labor seems to be. The way the the way that the bids are done is the contractor provides the what the total price is, and that includes not only to purchase and acquire the materials that they might be installing, but it also includes the labor, their their equipment needs, whatever to install that work. So it's all figured into that price, but we don't necessarily see a breakdown of labor versus materials versus equipment unless we specifically ask for it for, you know, there's a few reasons why that happens, but generally the unit prices that we're given by the contractor are just what that total cost is gonna be encompassing all of those items. Jason, you want to share with them? Do you have the bid totals from the other contractors? It was a fairly, fairly close knit um, cost as far as from first through third yep. or fourth contractor. So on, so on this particular project, we had three three contractors. Soper, as I mentioned before, was the low bidder with a base mm -hmm. bid of one point or one million one hundred and thirty one thousand three hundred and fifty uh, three hundred dollars and fifty cents. The second place contractor was Copland and Keenis, um, and they had one one million two hundred and ninety four thousand twenty five dollars and twenty cents. And then the um, third contractor was Wileski Construction, and they had one million six hundred and sixty nine thousand four hundred and seventy. So again, just roughly rounding, just to repeat those numbers, it was one point one million and change versus one almost one point three million and change, and then one point almost one point seven was kind of a spread. I just want to mention, I'm Nick Donald, electric superintendent. Um, as many of you guys know, we've been in the area working on the electric underground. If for some reason you guys have issues with uh, the sidewalks where they ripped out to go uh, underground to your house where the blacktop uh, grindings are settling out, we will be monitoring that, adding as needed uh, as this project goes on. So if you have questions, Feel free to call and we can get that handled off. Any other questions tonight? I guess at this time then I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing portion of the meeting. Okay. Motion by Merle's, second by Schuster. Any further discussion? Roll call vote please. Just want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, all your comments will be be taken under advisement. Uh, we're constantly looking to ways to, to cut costs and save money. So if there are any opportunities as far as available grants and whatever, be assured we will be looking at them. And I guess the only other thing I'd like to mention, you talked a little bit about those sewer laterals. Um, state has been coming down very hard on local utilities. There will be an ordinance in the very new, near future to mandate replacement of those sewer laterals. So even if you don't want to do it now, you're probably going to be forced to do it later. So I, I would suggest if you got the opportunity, pipe bursting, I'm well aware of, it works very well. I've been working with contractors over in Beaverdam right now on three different projects over there. Um, super doesn't tear up your front yard. You can get underneath porches that extend over the top of your your lateral, and like the gentleman said, it's a one-piece pipe that comes from your basement out to the street. But like I said, the DNR is fighting to cut down infiltration into the treatment plants, so they're, they are going to be requiring us to formulate a, an ordinance. So that'll be an expense, like you said, that you don't want to hear about now, but I'd rather tell you now that if you're looking to go out and borrow money for this project, include that, that sewer lateral, because it's maybe something that you will be forced, as well as the water, 
for some reason they provide funding for that because that's a safety health and safety issue so they do provide funding for the for the water replacement if you have a lead water service or galvanized water service but unfortunately there's no funding right now available for the sewer lateral replacement so if you know you got clay or a galvanized pipe going out to the street or cast iron going out to the street certainly look and get a hold of a contractor to give you the options open ditch digging is still the cheapest but you still have the the, the mess and the cleanup there afterwards and restoration and settling and what have you so just word of advice so is the city willing to go out and contact x number of the properties to nope. give us kind of an idea no that's all done individually you'll have to handle that on your own because it's inside you're going to have a new pipe out to your property line yeah. That's included in this project at no cost to you. So what I'm, what I'm trying to figure out though is if I go out and I get a quote, how am I supposed to know or how is my contractor supposed to know when my pipe is going to be exposed so that we don't have to dig the hole to redig a hole to connect to the city? Most of those private contractors will get a hold of the mainline contractor because the mainline contractor right now, if nobody gets a hold, they're going to tie on to what you got. Yep. So the digging will be inside the proposed sidewalk. So, you know, it'll be on your property line. So whether you do it in coordinate, in connection with the project, or later on, it does make a difference. You'd like to get in there, though, before the sidewalk's in there, so well, that's you don't scuff I'm, that all up. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so if we can do it now. On Depot Street, uh, we did have some customers that reached out during the street project to local plumbers in the area uh, to do those replacements at the time to help cost because they are digging and putting that pipe behind the sidewalk. So uh, during that time of construction would be the best time to contact. And by all means, get a, a you know a phone call early enough to get those you know figures made up uh, beforehand. We need some kind of time frame when it needs to be actually done. I mean, you know. Any uh, other questions before you leave? Appreciate you all coming tonight. Uh, you're welcome to hang around for the, the rest of the meeting. This is going to be voted on tonight? Yes. So you said that you have not beaver coming through you? Uh, I'm not. I haven't decided if I'm going well, to. I just had, well, it, they were over to do some work in their house. And so on the way out the back door, he says, you know, when they do the street, you know, we can replace that lateral for you. They've had other estimates done on Oak Street already. And he said it's been coming up. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's trying to get on the come out Next item of business is approval of payment of bills, checks to four hundred eight thousand nine hundred thirty-two dollars and no electronic or no vouchers, electronic transfers one hundred ninety-two thousand fifty-one dollars and ninety cents. Entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills. Motion by Grant, second by Schuster. Any further discussion, questions, or comments? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Aye. Schuster. Aye. Payment of bills have been approved. Next, we have reports of officials. Resolution 29 2022 approved mayoral appointments. Whereas the mayor has diligently searched for individuals willing to give of themselves by serving on the Board of Appeals, CDA, Plan Commission, and Recreation Committee. And whereas the mayor wishes to make the following appointments. Rick Scalma, Board of Appeals, eight, expires 8 of 2024. Robert Offell, Board of Appeals, 8 of 2024. Ken Steffen, Board of Appeals, 8 of 2024. Jerry Stoolsman, CDA, 8 of 2026. Jerry Stoolsman, Fire and Police Citizen Committee, 
8th of 2025, Josh Nichols, Plan Commission, 8th of 2025, Tom Schulte, Plan Commission, 8th of 2025, Bruce Olner, Plan Commission, 8th of 2025, Ken Steffen, Plan Commission, 8th of 2025, Wendy Jo Schmiedma, Recreation, 8th of 23, Amy Walters, Recreation Committee, 8th of 24, Jennifer White, Resolution Recreation Committee, 8th of 2025. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of June, June will accept, accepts the aforementioned recommendation passed by this Common Council, City of Juno, this the ninth day of August 2022. I would move the passage of Resolution 29 2022. Motion by Morose. Second by Schuster. Any further discussion? Most of these are re-ups. Jerry Stoltzman is new to the CDA and the, the Fire and Police Citizen Committee. At this time, I'll entertain any questions. If not, roll call vote, please. Aye. Schuster? Aye. Evans? Aye. Rotten? Aye. Resolution 29, 2022 is passed. Next, we have resolution. 30, 2022, resolution authorizing public improvement and levying special assessments against benefit property in the city of Juneau, Wisconsin. Okay, would you like to read that? Where is the common council of the city of Juneau, Wisconsin held a public hearing at 7 p.m. on the ninth day of August, 2022, for the purpose of hearing all interested persons concerning the preliminary resolution or report on the proposed public improvements along a portion of East Oak Street and preliminary assessments against benefited properties and heard all persons who desired to speak at the meeting. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Common Council of City of Juneau, Wisconsin determines as follows. One, the preliminary assessment report, a copy of which is attached here to and incorporated herein as if, if fully set forth herein, including the plans and the assessments well set forth therein, is adopted and approved. Two, Payment for the improvement shall be made by assessing the entire cost of the property benefited as indicated in the report. Three, assessments shown on the report represent an exercise of the police power and have been determined on a reasonable basis and are hereby confirmed. Four, assessment can, shall be due within 30 days of the billing date. Assessments may be paid in cash or in six annual. six annual installments to the city clerk. Installments shall be placed on the next tax roll after the due date for collection and shall bear interest at the rate of to be determined, to be determined per annum on the unpaid balance from the due date. Five, the city clerk shall publish this resolution as a class one notice under chapter 985 Wisconsin statutes and six. After construction is complete and the final assessment amounts have been determined, the city clerk shall mail a statement of the amount of final assessment, due date, and an explanation of payment options to every property owner whose name appears on the assessment roll, whose post office address is known or can with reasonable diligence be ascertained. All right. And so I would move to passage of resolution 302. Motion by Morose. Is there a second? Second by, by Evans. Any further discussion? I would simply point out that you've heard all the comments uh, this evening and that you've had a lot of diligence as far as looking for grants, but I would encourage you to just go through that again to see if there's anything that can be done to offset the cost because it is a significant cost. I know you've been doing that and you've been doing that uh, very diligently, but just, you know, just look, look one more time. Um, and then, of course, you're going to look at these individual situations that have been raised and also to point out that anybody that does pay in installments, they will pay interest. And a lot of times that interest is up around 5 or 6 percent. Any idea what it is right now? So, so you will get a good grade on that. So if you're looking below, too, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm going to verify with Jason what sure. that would look like. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. No 
Council people, do we approve this or we have the electric utility patch back all the cuts that were put in everybody's driveway, I guess, and wait till the price of concrete comes down. I think that's highly unlikely. I, th I think we're in a world right now we don't have a crystal ball to look into, but I'm thinking if you talk to anybody, any experts in the field, this might level off, but I don't think we'll ever return to pre-COVID pricing. I mean, you could have said, well, we could have, should have, you know, many years ago taken care of this project, but regardless of your opinion, I think we've, we've stuck to a road replacement uh, policy or schedule that made sense. And uh, this one had to have Highland done before this street was done. So, you know, this Highland Street is the receiving sector. Yeah, we can put it all back, you know, just the way it was and leave old play for another couple of years, but I, I, we're not going to be able to regrow Joe's tree. <laughs> that one's gone already. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess right, right now, I think we're in a position we have to plow forward, whether, you know, I feel bad. I mean, this is the toughest job that a common council has to do is assess people or agree to assessments of property for road construction. You're never a popular person. Um, it's not like we sat on our hands on this and just waited for the price to get up. It was just happened to be the way the, the schedule came out on the on these streets. Oh, and you're taking a bid that's four hundred thousand dollars less than your high bid. Yeah. This is the type of thing that uh, um, there was a, another thing that triggered this was the lead, lead uh, replacement lateral pro program that came in. We know we have lead underneath that street. We only have a window of opportunity for maybe one or two years to get funding for that. So uh, it's a win-win regardless. And like I said, I think we're very reasonable on what we assess our property owners compared to other communities. I'm understanding some of those people in Beaverdam on that South Spring project, they're up to twenty some thousand dollars on their store frontages with the sidewalks, and yes. they're even paying for street lighting. I'm understanding and, and water and sewer infra infrastructure as well. So. The sewer and water was on the private, their private side yeah. stuff, or whatever, because they had to again go through the basements and whatnot. Yeah, there is a portion of the street lighting that they're responsible for. So I don't think we can do any less. Or, I mean, uh, we certainly would have the opportunity to assess the property owner more, but this has been the consistency that we followed for the last 20, 30 years here in this community. And since I've been mayor, I've made a, sure that every street gets treated the same. There's no, no consideration, you know, oh, no, we're not going to put sidewalk and curb there just because, you know, whatever. So this is certainly a replacement program here where there wasn't that argument. I. The gentleman forgets that there's a gutter apron that's 90% of your gutter, even though you lost the back part. And God only knows, that might have sheared off over the years. I don't know. You know, uh, that, that street's been blacktopped over so many times, there's only about that much curb showing up in most locations anyway. So, so um, yeah, I guess all I do is encourage you to vote in the affirmative to keep things moving forward for these people. And everybody will be happy when it's done, but you're going to have to pay pay the price of inconvenience while it's under construction. It's never easy. And there's always going to be complaints here to City Hall. And Megan, you know which which department you're going to have to funnel them to. So. Anything you want to add, Jason? No, I, I, I guess I didn't catch the first part of that, uh, no. answering some other questions here. But yeah, I think in, in general, yeah, I mean, the prices are what they are. And again, at least for the foreseeable future, we don't see any any reductions in those coming? Maybe if something, you know, something happens with the inventories and things like that build up again, we'll maybe see some prices come down. But at least, as far as what it looks like right now, whatever, you know, things are up and they might continue to keep going up. So it's not to say that if we kick the can down the road, that things are going to get better. And like I said, from my sources or trade magazines that I follow, that it's never going to go back to pre-COVID pricing. So. That's what we were talking about oh, prior yeah. while you were talking. Oh, sorry. I said our other option is we finish Highland and leave Oak the way it is. We have electric utility patch all the driveway crossings and what have you. Take her from there. But I don't think that's a progressive option, especially with the, the lead water replacement that we're trying to promote. And we know we've got lead water service. And, and, and the I&I &I issues. And yep. yep. I've said enough. No other questions or comments? Everybody's good. Roll call vote, please. Morales? Aye. Evans? Aye. Groton? Aye. Schuster? Aye.
Resolution 30, 2022 is passed. Okay, Resolution 31, 2022, Resolution Awarding Construction Contract for 2022 <coughs> East Oak Street. Richard, you want to read that one? Sure. Resolution number 31-2022. Resolution awarding the construction contract for the 2022 East Oak Street reconstruction project. Whereas the Public Works Committee of the Common Council of the City of Juneau, Wisconsin, did advertise and receive sealed bids for the 2022 East Oak Street reconstruction project. And whereas three bids were received and are on file with the city engineer, <coughs> Whereas a public hearing was held on August 9, 2022, for the purposes of hearing all interested parties concerning matters related to the proposed assessments of, for this project, now therefore be it resolved that the construction contract for the 2022 East Oak Street reconstruction project be and is hereby awarded to Soper Sewer and Water LLC of Oshkosh, Wisconsin, for an amount not to exceed. One million one hundred thirty-one thousand three hundred dollars and fifty cents. I would um, move to pass resolution thirty-one twenty-two. Motion by Evans. Is there a second? Second. Second by Gretton. Any further discussion? Jason, once again, this uh, number of the of the low bidder was below <coughs> your estimated cost. Correct. Yep. yep. MSA had estimated for cross construction. So. Yep. Any other discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Evans. Aye. Gratton. Aye. Merles. Aye. Schuster. Aye. Resolution 31 2022 is passed. Moving on. Clerk Treasurer, you have anything to report today? Nothing. Just hopefully. Everything's going well with the elections, and I'll be heading over there shortly. <laughs> Please, Lord, be home before 10. Okay. Take Kay along with you. She can count fast. <laughs> Written reports. Any questions on the building permit report? The public, the police department, Juno Fire and EMS. No questions on them. Moving on, reports of committees, commissions, and boards, library report. Uh, okay, are you responding? No, um, I was supposed to be working the election, so. <laughs> Janet said that she will update you all next month. Okay. Oh, dog. Okay. <laughs> Plan commission. Plan yeah. commission, we met. We discussed uh, uh, implementing a pilot program for keeping of chickens within the city limits. Ashley Sickman was here and she said that according to Facebook, there's 10 to 15 families interested in having chickens in the community. Other communities have chickens, so we looked at uh, what other communities are doing and made a, a list, a proposed list for the pilot program. And we are meeting this Friday at 6.15 here to put that into a, onto paper for a pilot program. Such ideas were the annual license fee would be $50. We're, we're looking at a limit of families of 10, a limit of chickens of six per family. Um, the breeds allowed would be brown or black chickens. They don't, they're heavier and don't fly uh, like a white chicken. Site plan was required with the coop, a run of, with a run with a 10-foot setback. So variances would be considered. Coops would be required to be anchored down. Families requesting to have chicks, chickens would need the approval of abutting neighbors. No roosters. Keep chicken feed in airtight containers. Abandoned coops will have a time limit to be removed. No butchering in the city limits. Failure to receive to receive a permit. Uh, those are just some of the things that are on on the list to be looked at. So we will meet and get that done. <laughs> Public safety and planning. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, is the pilot program all ten? Do you have ten permits for a pilot? Or that was what was discussed. Really? 
this is just off the top of my head. If you make the investment, I mean, if you had 10 families come and say, I have now invested in this group, and I have invested in these containers of beef and feed, and I've invested in these chickens that my kids have all named, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, you know, it might sound like a good idea, but after people maybe have invested this much money and the children get attached to their chicken, can you or would we then turn down the chickens? I, so I just throw that as a good idea, but when you're faced with these families that say, well, I just invested all this money, we then say, well, we don't really like it. This is kind of, um, we didn't want to go through the cost of making an ordinance and this is what we want. And it doesn't fit the community. Maybe we want to do this if we can tweak it now or now. Mm -hmm. Much like the uh, pilot program for downtown, for having, having a eatery out front of your establishment, that we could, we could tweak it a little bit as to found it doesn't work or does work. So does your committee believe that if you have this pilot program, that you will probably then adopt the chicken ordinance? Because I guess I, as we a person, would, really in, would like to have a vote because I would vote in the negative. And it would seem that if you go this way, do I get, will there be a vote to, for the first question, which is, do we want to allow chickens in the city of Jimmy? Six people get your act together because I don't want to have to break the tie on this one. I got, I, got, I, got, I got two neighbors that showed up to that meeting that want to have chickens. And you know, I. I so this pilot program has to be agreed on by the committee. And then the committee represents it to the board as to what their feelings are. And our clerk is going to do a weekly boards. inspection, too. So yep, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess for the pilot program, we want to see how many people are interested in doing it. We don't want to change orders if only, or do we have an order if only two people want to do it? In that the same note, Kay, we're hoping it'll fizzle out. <laughs> you see, know, I, I don't, don't, do it. You see, I don't think it will fizzle out. See, the, the, I, I, my concern is it won't fizzle out, and I just want to clarify that I think there are people that don't want chickens in the city limits. And I would be one. And I would represent that, and I, maybe I would be seen as a bias, as somebody that was raised with chickens and <laughs> believes chickens are dirty. <laughs> and and um, they take a lot of work. And just like we have problems with people and their pets, right? Somebody that owns dogs, sometimes they, they're, they're great. They always take care of curbing the dogs. And then you have people that don't take care of the dogs. We would have the same things with chickens. Some people will do exactly as they are expected to. And what are we going to do with people that do not? Um, and then do we employ our police power? Are we going to have police check this and find them? Um, and so those are, you know, those are just some of my concerns. And I just want to represent section of the city that maybe is not interested in having any chickens we had, in the city. We had originally talked that maybe we have four families, you know, for the city, but then when there's 15 families that are looking for it, so I, I believe that the families of 10 would be the full-fledged if it went, went full-fledged and limited. I guess I, mean, I would suggest that it would be for the pilot <coughs> I mean, yeah, that's a sense. A pilot program is a test program. You let 10 people invest what's going to have to be invested in six chickens that's, and to keep them. Great. You know, if they're going to come and uh, we're going to say, okay, you now have spent thousands of dollars and you've named every chicken, it, it, it becomes a much harder thing to say, well, no, this really isn't a good fit for the city of Juno. Then what? Yeah, then what? And I, so I'm, I'm, I guess I'm really on the fence about the pilot thing, and I think that those are those considerations. And there is a workshop on Friday. 
They are Friday. going to finalize their decision. This Friday, 615, we'll be here to finalize the proposal that comes to, uh, to the board to even allow them. Yeah, and, and I have to say, it is difficult to have a relationship, a good relationship with your neighbor, and they really want chickens, and their children really want chickens. And you really do not want chickens. <laughs> right? You I mean, have to sign off on it. And so then yeah. you create yeah. this uncomfortable situation, I think. Um, so those are my feelings on the anti chicken. And I was raised with chickens. <laughs> Dave and John are sitting on the committee to. Uh, narrow down the requirements and what have you, and they'll take your comments under so, advisement, uh, I'm sure. So. Appreciate your input. Anything else, Dave, from Planning Commission? Uh, nope, it's all feathers in the future. <laughs> 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 Finance Committee, Cheryl's not here, we did not have a meeting. No. Personnel Committee, okay. <laughs> we didn't have a meeting, I didn't feather anybody. <laughs> <laughs> John, Public Safety. Public Safety, we did have a meeting. Um, Steve handed out his uh, monthly report. Uh, there was a deal with that 328 South Fairfield. The house that was on fire burned up. Uh, the attorney got a uh, letter together and it was served. To be yeah. And I've had that conversations with him now. Okay, they heard him back? Or? Uh, yeah, I've talked to her a few times. She's agreeable to doing something, but she seems to have some challenges as far as moving from saying she's doing something to actually doing something. Okay. So uh, she indicated most recently a couple proposals that I'm going to talk to the neighbor about, perhaps selling her property to I them. He was in favor of that. To yeah. do that, or um, otherwise contributing money toward the cleanup. Okay. So, okay. and uh, so moving forward then. Moving forward, I think the better option for the city is can be more expensive if you have to do an enforcement action. You can, we have that power to do it. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's gonna be less expensive if we can work it out for the neighbors. Sure. And I think this, uh, Devin Chados, she's gonna be cooperative. She just uh, has some challenges where she can't figure it out. So sure. I and think we're gonna have to- Before she wouldn't even answer the phone. Yeah, so no, now she's responsive. Well, that's good. And uh, now we're gonna present some proposals to the neighbor. We're only days away from being here. Yeah. yeah. Fire, so. this month would be right. Well, if you didn't do anything, I'm convinced she would never do anything. Right. Right. It's just overwhelming to. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, yeah. Um, their thing, uh, Dave. Before we had national night out last Tuesday, I think it was well, well, well attended. A lot of city departments were in there, and we also lost a police officer, uh, Dylan Townsend sent his letter of the nation. So we had Dale, or Steve, uh, authorization to uh, get an application out for another police officer. So we lost that one. And, um, Dan Zank had the, he, he had 40 calls for the EMS. And the city at the uh, fire department had five calls. And auto aid is now in effect with Horicon Fire Department with Juno. We helped them out and they help us out because we're both kind of short on Personnel, we've had a couple calls together, we're working well so far. And we just talked about the meeting with, with Dave said about the chicken or pilot program. And we also mentioned that uh, Bob Sweeney, the cable director, has retired. And we got a new person on board for that position. And that's what we need. Any questions for John? See none, moving on to Public Works, David. Public Works, he does not meet. Cable TV, Jane's not here. We did have a meeting, basically. Well, okay. Don, our, our new um, Cable TV uh, coordinator, um, David Bennett, and he was actually here tonight. I saw him mm -hmm. in the back on his bus. Uh, so he was at the meeting. Uh, talk about uh, his transition into Bob's job, um, talk about uh, ideas for recording, and there was um, a motion 
Now, uh, there was a little bit of a reorganization of that committee just because Bob always served as the chairman and the department head. So now Jane, as being the representative from the council, would be the chairman. And then uh, Dave Bennett, the new person, the new department head. So that clarification was made. And um, that's about it. Kay actually serves as a private citizen on the on the cable committee. And she's taken frequent hiatuses, so you know, I put her back on committees, and then she comes back as all the person. So it takes a little while to get that all straightened out again. So. <laughs> I'm about to take another. <laughs> <laughs> uh, adjourn. So move. Motion by Grant. Second. Second by Schuster. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Carried. Thank you. This meeting is closed.